Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this online version of Badger Talks Live. Um, Badger Talks Live is a group of more than 350 current and former UW faculty and staff who talk all around the state of Wisconsin. And, uh, and now we are coming to you via Facebook Live. My name is Professor Christine Whelan. I teach in the School of Human Ecology at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Uh, I teach in consumer science and I am thrilled to be here with you today. Um, and I'm going to be talking about a, a topic that is near and dear to to our hearts right now, which is the meaning of all of this. What is going on right now? And how can we do what we feel is the right thing um, in times of uncertainty? So I wanna to talk to you about pandemic purpose today. Uh, and, um, and you know, the, uh, my goal here today is to present for about 30 minutes. And, um, and then if you have questions along the way, if you can type them into the comments and then I will answer them along, uh, I'll answer them at the end probably. Um, but yeah, feel free to insert your questions along the way and, uh, and then we'll have a good discussion at the end. All right, so let's begin with something that I don't know about you, but um, I have seen all over my Facebook feed, all over my social media feed, which is this, um, this idea that if I am not using this pandemic to find my greater purpose and meaning in life, then I am wasting an incredible opportunity. I don't know about you, but that freaks me out. I, um, I have been getting messages like this. During a pandemic, Isaac Newton had to work from home too. He used his time wisely. Oh my goodness. This is in fact true. There's a lot of good stuff about what Isaac Newton did um, when he fled London during a pandemic. But yikes, that's a lot of pressure. Um, or perhaps you could take a lighter approach and there is the 14-day uh, quarantine workout plan uh, that includes um, anti-COVID abs and, um, and, and, these, and, and st arm strengthening exercises, all of which you should do to make it a better you in this, um, in this time. Um, and, uh, and, and then there's also the idea that, you know, Shakespeare wrote King Lear uh, during a pandemic. So what are you doing with your time? Whoa, um, I think everybody has just got to hold up a second, okay? First of all, this is not a national pause for so many people for all the first responders, for all of the folks who are working in healthcare, um, for all the parents of young children like me, for example, um, we're trying to add homeschooling on top of it all. This is an incredibly busy time for so many people. So be kind to yourself. Now, just because we're, we can lay off and say we don't have to write a work of Shakespeare um, or, um, or have COVID proof abs or whatever that means during this time, does not mean that you know those bigger questions of, why am I here? What's going on? Um, what, what is all this for? Those do tend to pop up in times of uncertainty. So I want to address some of those, but in real life terms, to give you some small steps tools to take these big scary ideas and demystify them in a way that um, hopefully will be useful to you. Now, in life, sometimes when we think about changes, sometimes we are pushed by pain, a painful circumstance, um, a transition, a loss. Uh, many of us are, uh, are facing changes in our employment, um, changes in our day-to-day -day lives and, and family structure. Other times, changes can mean that we are pulled by possibilities, possibilities to explore new avenues, uh, possibilities to do new things that we otherwise wouldn't uh, have time for in our previously structured lives. So I want to look at this search for, for purpose in a time of pandemic. Um, and I want to answer three kind of big questions. First of all, what is going on here? What is the framework that we should look at this through? Um, and what does purpose mean right now? And what can you do today? What can I do today to make purpose something that is part of my life? All right, so first of all, I wanted to begin with something that I begin with all my classes at UW with. Uh, this is a quote from Seneca called, not for school, but for life we learn. And the idea behind this quote is that I really believe in teaching the, the stuff that is not just in the textbooks, but that will make a difference in real people's lives. And that's why I study purpose and meaning. And it's really about translating the academic research on, on purpose and meaning, on well-being, on happiness, and putting it into a way that we can apply on a day-to-day on a -day level. 
I do that through the uh, through the framework, through the academic framework of human ecology. And I want to just take a minute to introduce to you guys what human ecology is, because it's not something that um, that all universities have. Big Ten universities have schools of human ecology, and we're really fortunate to have an incredible one here at UW. So human ecology is this multidisciplinary field. It's applied, meaning that we don't just uh, learn our stuff to put it in research journals, but we try to bring it into the community. And it focuses on this interrelationship, on the intersection between human beings and their natural, built, and social environments. As you can imagine right now, this interconnection and understanding how we are interconnected both as humans, with, uh, with animals, with our environment, um, and uh, in our social life is more important now than ever. When we try to look at something from a human ecological perspective, any question really, we want to look at it from an eco rather than an ego perspective. Now, if you look at life from an ego perspective, you see yourself at the top of the food chain. You are more important than anybody else, and you are always wanting to do things that help me, 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 um, potentially uh, even if it's going to hurt others. When you look at the world from an eco you perspective, you see yourself as part of this interconnected web of, of humanity, uh, web with nature, um, and, and part of a larger whole. So eco you uh, and, and this, this concept of human ecology recognizes that you as an individual are embedded in this ever evolving interconnected web of life. Now, when we think about who we are and why all this is happening, thinking about life as, as part of a larger whole, thinking about ourselves as interconnected is really important because I think it helps us frame these questions of purpose. So the question of who, I am, who am I and what am I doing in this world, if we think about it through a human ecological perspective, has a really different tenor and one that I think is a whole lot more useful. So I wanna take a moment to define purpose. All right. Now, first of all, purpose is one of those words that's in the cultural zeitgeist, and, um, and, but often we don't really have a good definition for it. Some people define it as a singular life aim, like the one thing that you're supposed to do with your life. And I don't know about you, but if, if somebody tells me I have to come up with my singular life aim, that really freaks me out and gives me heart palpitations. So I don't want to do that. Instead, I encourage everybody to think about a purpose mindset. And I define a purpose mindset as using your gifts in keeping with your values to make a positive impact on the lives and the causes that you care most about. So using your gifts in keeping with your values to make a positive impact on the things that you care most about. Now, I'm putting up a slide here of, um, of a bricklayer working, and that's because there's a wonderful parable about purpose that I think really helps explain it, how what living with a purpose mindset means quite nicely. The parable is of a traveler who came across three men working, and he asked the first one, what are you doing? The first guy said, I'm putting one brick on top of the other, and that was true. Then the second guy said, I'm building a wall, and that was also true. The third guy said, I'm building a cathedral. And that was true as well. Now, the first man had a job. The second man had a career. The third man had a purpose. And in our lives, we are all building. We are all putting one brick on top of the other. And you know what? It often isn't glamorous, and it's often really hard work to put one brick on top of the other. Some of those bricks, especially in our personal lives right now, can seem awfully heavy. But having a sense of purpose means seeing the larger vision, seeing the larger cathedral that you're trying to build, not in a religious sense, but in a sense of building a larger whole in your life. What are the, what is that, that larger purpose that you are trying to act um, and, and live toward? All right, so if that's this idea of, of generally of purpose, um, you might say, fine, I'm, I'm good with purpose, but why did, what's the research say? Why does this work? Now, the good part about purpose is that when you have a sense of purpose, you have a sense of increased agency in your life, which is an academic way of saying that you feel like you're capable of doing the good things that you want to do. And if you feel like you're empowered and able to do the things you want to do in your life, it turns out you have more life satisfaction. You're happier. So that means that then purpose is linked to all sorts of positive health outcomes, better sleep, 
fewer heart attacks, lower risk of premature death and dementia. It's also list, uh, linked to all sorts of preventative health measures. More likely to, um, you're more likely to embrace all sorts of, of ways of taking care of yourself, everything from getting a flu shot to a mammogram, and it, having lower levels of pro-inflammatory gene expression as well. So knowing the why behind what you do is super, super important to having all sorts of good positive outcomes in your life. You know, it's also interestingly important for you have better relationships, you have, um, you live longer. And in fact, you even have more money in your pocket if you have a sense of purpose research finds. Now, you might say, great, great, I am totally on board. I want to increase my purpose, but how do I do it? So here's the good news. Um, you do not have to do anything crazy to increase your sense of purpose, and you actually can strengthen your purpose with some fairly simple steps. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about today. So remember, I'm not trying to make you into Isaac Newton or Shakespeare and do anything crazy during this time. I really do promise that I can break this down into simple steps that can help you feel more purposeful and meaningful in the days that you, in the day and the things that you already are doing. So here's the first step. I would like you to think about three of your core values that you would like to live today. Let's not think about it in your life as a whole. That gets scary right now. What core values would you like to have guide you today? I've put up a list of, uh, of values. These are from um, this is a research-based list of values uh, from a researcher who did this worldwide and found that these were among the universal values that people seem to identify with. Pick three, um, or you can make up your own if you want. But remember, happiness is not a value. Happiness is a byproduct of living your values. So pick three of these kinds of, of values and, and write down the three values that you would like to help guide your life today. All right, so once you write down three of those values, I now challenge you to write down three gifts that you have, three strengths that you would like to use today. And when I think about gifts and strengths, I don't think about things that you can do, but that you don't like to do. I think about want to skills, so things that you can do, but that you also want to do. Think about the gifts that you want to bring to your life today. Um, like, for example, I'm, I'm, probably quite good at emptying the dishwasher, which I've been doing a lot these days. Uh, but that is not one of the gifts that I really want to highlight as using today. So think about the three gifts that you want to use today and write down and write, take, and take notes and write down three of those. All right. So you have the three values you want to have in your life today, the three gifts and strengths you want to use. The next thing I'd like you to do is to write down three people, groups, or causes who you would like to positively impact today. Again, let's keep it to today, all right? So who do you wanna make a positive impact on? Write down three of those uh, groups or individuals, and, um, and then at the end of that, you will have uh, a group of nine words or phrases. You'll have three values, you'll have three strengths, and you'll have three impact groups or people, all right? Now, the thing is, you could end the purpose statement there, but quite frankly, we're in a pandemic right now. Things are really topsy-turvy, and I wanna acknowledge that. I very firmly believe that one of the main reasons why we do not live our purpose uh, as, as, we, as we sort of aspire to is because we are not looking at all the reasons that, that hold us back. Um, and our anxieties and our fears certainly hold us back on the path to purpose now more than ever. So today, I'd like you to think about what are the things you're afraid of today? not existentially in life, but what are the things that you are holding you back? Maybe there are the things, like for example, this morning I lay there in bed thinking, really, another day of this? And I, for a moment, I, I just didn't want to get out of bed. I thought about what are the things that are, are holding me back? What, what am I afraid of? And, those, and just thinking them out loud and, um, and acknowledging them is a really empowering step towards saying, the next and final thing. So write down the three of the thing, three of the anxieties that you have. If there are more than three anxieties, write those down too. Just write down your fears and anxieties that seem to be holding you back today. And what, what I'd like you to do is to think about whether you can accept your fears and anxieties. Now, accepting your fears and anxieties is kind of hard. Accepting your fears and anxieties um, is something that can take, you know, years of therapy. We don't have time for that right now, right? So instead, what I, I, I propose this exercise to you. Think about, um, think about some of the, the fears and anxieties that, are, um, that, that you are experiencing right now and imagine them as monsters, okay? And uh, say you're, you're trying to be a bus driver, driving the bus of your life. You're driving down the road, Driving, 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 driving. And all of a sudden, these monsters jump out at you and they are all over you. 
Okay. They're in front of you, behind you, on top of you, everywhere. The monsters are just making it so that you can't drive your bus forward through life. Well, what are you going to do? You can't turn around because there are monsters behind you. You can't go left. You can't go right. How are you going to get to where you want to go? Well, this is an exercise from acceptance and commitment therapy. And what they encourage you to do is to put that bus in, in, to put that bus in, in stop open the door of the bus and invite those monsters on the bus. Hi, fear of failure, good to see you. Hi, fear that my loved ones might be at risk right now, good to see you, get on the bus. And as you invite all of your fears and anxieties onto your bus of life, you tell them to get in, sit down and not make so much noise because then you can then be the one to drive your bus ahead. So this, this is an easier said than done exercise. I, I am not suggesting that we will all, um, we'll all accomplish it today. But thinking about the idea of naming and accepting your fears and anxieties and knowing that you are not alone in them is a very important uh, step toward moving forward in a purposeful way. The, um, the, once, you have the, now, once you have your three fears and anxieties, I would also like you to do one final thing here. And it is to think about what can you do today? What can you, what, what, what purpose-based commitments can you make today to make this day meaningful? Now, again, these do not have to be big things, but look back at your list of values, look back at your strengths, look back at who you want to positively impact. Acknowledge those fears and anxieties and then say, well, what really can I do today? Maybe it's making dinner with your family. Maybe it's going for a walk. Um, maybe it is uh, honking outside a neighbor's house to let you know that, that uh, so they'll know that you're thinking about them. Whatever it is, think about some of the small things that you can do today to make this day purposeful and meaningful. And write three of those purpose-based commitments down. Okay? So then at the end of all of that, you have those three values, three strengths, you have three impact groups or people or causes that you wanna help, you have those fears and anxieties that may be holding you back, and you have three purpose-based commitments to take the next step today, right? Doesn't have to be big. I love this image of this fish jump, making this leap from a smaller pond into a bigger pond because I have always felt like this fish. Um, you, can you imagine what this fish is thinking? This fish is thinking, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, am I gonna make it? The fish is terrified, right? And we have all been terrified in our lives when our lives change around us. Again, whether we're pushed by pain or pulled by possibility, our lives can change around us. And in fact, we don't know, maybe that fish has to make the jump because the water's boiling or just turned to acid and he's got to get into a, a better, a better, clearer pond. We don't know. Or maybe the fish is making the jump because the fish knows that there is something better ahead if, if that fish can take the risk. So yes, I've anthropomorphized this fish to no end, but we are all like this fish. All right. And when we think about taking, living a purpose mindset, especially during times of unrest, it's okay to be as freaked out as that fish. So what I did is I put it all together. All right, and I put it together in what I'm calling my pandemic purpose statement, um, and and I encourage all of you to do the same. So uh, here is my version of it. I start with because I value, and then I inserted my values. All right, I will use my gifts for, and then I inserted the three gifts that I want to use today, and then I inserted the the folks that I want to positively impact: my children, my students, and the broader public. All right. Then I said, you know what? I'm going to have to accept my fears and anxieties. And boy, howdy, do I have fears and anxieties, right? I mean, especially right now. I, 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 am I being helpful enough? Am I doing as much as I can? Um, I, I'm fearing for my loved ones. I'm, I, I, am, I, am I good enough? But still today, I'm making conscious purpose-based commitments to do what I can. And I just want you to see these are not Herculean tasks, but I'm going to make a baked potato bar tonight for my kids, one of our favorite family meals. You know, everybody gets to help themselves to all the toppings. We're going to take a bike ride later because it's sunny outside. And I'm going to continue to check in with my students in my consuming happiness class at UW to make sure that they're doing okay along the way as well. 
So I encourage you to do a purpose statement like this yourself. I've been trying to do it every day and it really helps because each day I think I'm going to use some different values. I want to use some different gifts. I want to mix it up. Some days I'm anxious about some things uh, more than others. Um, my family is in New York City, and so I'm often anxious about, you know, reports uh, from my family and friends there. Um, and, uh, and then I try to make these purpose-based commitments to do fun things um, with those that I care about most in the ways that I can right now. Um, one other exercise that I use in, um, in conjunction with this is an exercise that um, a, my a wonderful mentor of mine, Willow Hearth, suggested, and it's called a modified tongue glen exercise and it's it's a modified tongue meditation really when you the idea is you think about all the things that are making you anxious um, and 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 you can list those as we've done in this exercise and then think about all the things that you would like to feel instead of that anxiety now think of the um, the, the, the emotions the feelings in your body um, and and the outcomes that you would like to have and it, so you think about the, the anxieties and the, and the tough part and the emotions and the, the thing that you would like to feel and do, all right? Then when you think, of, then what the exercise is to breathe in. And you breathe in all of the anxieties, all of the tough stuff. You breathe it all in. And as you breathe it in, you realize that you're not alone in feeling those. If you're worried about your loved ones, if you're worried about your own health, if you're worried about the state of the world right now, you are not alone. Breathe it in knowing that you have the, those anxieties like so many millions and millions of other people right now. Breathe it in. And then as you breathe out, breathe out the feelings and the wishes that you have for yourself, but also for everybody else who is feeling this way. Breathe in all those anxieties that you and so many others are feeling. And breathe out the feelings that you want for yourself and for so many others. This is a wonderful way of showing the interconnectedness of all of us, really embracing that human ecological way of thinking about things, but also I, acknowledging that you are not alone in the, um, in the anxieties that we have. And it's, it's a way of feeling some agency and empowerment that we can live purposefully um, and, and, and we don't have to push these anxieties and fears aside and push them under the rug, that we can live purposefully and powerfully together. So if you're looking for some ideas on how to, you know, embrace purpose in this pandemic, the first one that I really recommend is that, that uh, daily purpose statement that, um, that I showed you and that I will show you again in just a minute. I also um, would encourage you to do a time diary. A good friend and colleague of mine, Laura Vanderkam, wrote a wonderful book called 168 Hours. You have more time than you think. And she is the queen of time diaries. Uh, and you, in fact, can print out a free one if you go to her website. But she, um, what I have done time diaries uh, with her model many, many times. I am thinking I need to do a new one right now because everything has gone so topsy-turvy, working from home and um, not being able to socialize in the same way we were used to. These are all things that change how we spend our time. Doing a time diary is a great way to see what you are actually doing and then see how you're spending your time and how you can spend time more in keeping with your values, more in keeping with the things that are meaningful to you. Now, this is not a guilt trip at all if you're spending a lot more time watching TV um, or like me, you know, eating bags and bags of popcorn. Eh, you know, it's a pandemic. But if you are, um, but if, but it's just looking at the time diary is a really good way to, uh, to figure out what you're doing so that you can then see what changes you might want to make on the margin on a day to day basis. Engaging in some cognitively based compassion training, CBCT, um, and any of these mindfulness exercises is also a wonderful way to kind of center yourself to give you the strength to, uh, to continue on. I want to share this poem with you. Um, it's a poem from Catherine McKenna. And um, I just think it is so beautiful uh, and speaks to so many of us right now. She writes, now every time I witness a strong person, I want to know. What dark did you conquer in your story? Mountains do not rise without earthquakes. We are in an earthquake right now, right? Uh, many of us have had other earthquakes in our lives. Um, how can we be strong? How can we ma be made even stronger acknowledging that 
these earthquakes do create mountains and um, and and strength and beauty on the other side. But of course, since it's me, right, um, I, I'm never satisfied uh, just as it is, and I and I want to edit it a little bit. Um, so I, I've edited it too. Um, I want to know what dark did you accept in your story? What dark did you integrate into your story? Even what dark did you embrace in your story? The idea that mountains do not rise without earthquakes is not meant to silver lining any of the pain and suffering that so many are experiencing right now, but it is simply to say that we have agency. We have the ability to use a purpose mindset to make small, meaningful steps in our day that will make us feel good in that moment and will make us feel good um, because we will be helping others as well. So I encourage all of you um, to, uh, to think about whether maybe a pandemic purpose statement might work for you. And if you, if you think that you would like to uh, do this exercise, I have created a free PDF off of my website. Um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll also be able to put it on the Badger Talks um, and UW Connect homepage and, and Badger Talk website as well where you can download a free worksheet so that you can print it out and every day you can create a new one and, um, and, and try to really embrace this purpose mindset on, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. My hope is that it will help you demystify this idea of purpose, understand and really embrace the idea of the human ecological perspective and how we are all interconnected, and then be able to take some small, good, right next steps uh, to, um, to, to live purposefully right now. As, um, as I was watching TV with my kids, I saw Frozen 2 for the, oh, second, third, fifth time uh, recently. And I really loved the, uh, the line from Anna in Frozen 2, where she said, where she sings that when everything seems to be falling apart around you, what's really important is to think about what is the next right thing to do and do that next right thing. So for all of you out there, I encourage you to think about purpose right now as doing the next right thing. And I hope some of these tools and some of these ideas will, uh, will be helpful to you as, uh, as you take those steps for the next right thing. Um, and so thank you to everybody for joining us. And, um, and I hope that you will join us for, uh, for the next Badger Talks Live. You can visit badgertalks.wisc.edu for the complete schedule of Badger Talks Live um, and all the live talks and for a link to YouTube where all of these talks are going to be saved and closed captioned. So thank you um, and, uh, and, and really be well. Uh, I hope that these exercises are something that you can do not only as an individual, uh, but with your family members as well. Stay safe, thank you, and I will uh, open to questions. Oh, I think some, um, oh, some questions are even coming in right now. This is very exciting. All right, so yes, first of all, can these activities be done as a family? Totally, they can totally be done as a family. Um, and um, I have a four, six, and eight-year-old, and, um, and we're doing them as a family as well. Uh, the, um, there are, you might want to help kids uh, think about what their values are. Um, and you can also talk about doing this as a, um, you could do it as a family list. You can do it as individual lists um, if you have slightly older kids and then come to the table and discuss how everybody can support each other in achieving their, their goals and their, their purpose-based commitments for the day. Uh, so yes, I, all these things are, are really good family fun activities. I have, um, I've, I've, sent this and it has been used by many uh, child psychologists as well um, as a way to work with kids um, and, uh, and, and help them feel empowered. Um, the, uh, someone asked, can you give the name and the link again for the time diary? Yes. I think the link, you can go to lauravandercam.com. It's uh, Laura, L-A-U-R-A, and it's Vandercam, V-A-N-D-E-R-K-A-M lauravandercam.com. And the book is called 168 Hours. So I think you can also go to 1168hours.com and uh, you will find the free, um, the free time diary there as well. Uh, where can we find the courses that you teach? Oh, I'm so, thank you. That's a, that's a wonderful question. So I teach a class called Consuming Happiness uh, and it is in the consumer science department. I am welcoming and I always have welcomed lots of auditors into the class. 
uh, in these crazy and changing times, I think um, I'm going to be working with the School of Human Ecology to try to put this course up online and make it available to the broader public. Consuming happiness, we look at the intersection of happiness in the market economy, how we successfully and unsuccessfully try to buy happiness. I also uh, teach and, and, uh, and co-created a course called EcoU about ecology, human ecology and belonging purpose and the um, ecology of human happiness. And that's another course that um, that is currently in blended semi-online format that we can uh, hopefully bring out to more people in um, in the years to in the years to come. Um, so I, I hope that uh, I hope this has been useful for you guys and um, and thank you so much. Please share this link with uh, anyone who you will think would find it useful as well. Stay safe everyone and uh, here's to pandemic purpose.